So my name is Alan. I'm here to talk about web deduplication. So probably I should explain what web deduplication is first. So what we do is we identify and cluster duplicate web pages, you know, anything that looks the same, basically. Um, <clears throat> and then we take these clusters, we pick representative URLs that actually get put into the index and served to users at search time. Um, in the process, we generate a mapping from dupes to these representative URLs, which we usually call canonicals. Um, and we forward the signals some of the time so that uh, these deduplicated pages don't just lose their signals, you can keep them. <clears throat> so why do we do this? Well, uh, first most intuitive answer is that uh, search users don't want to see the same result 20 times, you know, same page over and over again. That's not a very good search experience. Uh, the second reason is that <clears throat> once you have uh, removed all these pages, you actually get a bunch of space back in the index so you can serve more unique results. So you can start uh, handling long tail queries. And um, this is also advantageous to webmasters because you can retain signals for your site when you redesign it, when you move pages around. The signals get forwarded from the old location to the new location. And um, the last thing that we get out of this is we get what we call alternate names. <clears throat> now this is two different things kind of at the same time. Um, these days it's used mostly for localization, but the older use is if you wanted to say rebrand your site. We used to be, well, let's say that Larry decides that he's tired of Google and he wants to fold it into alphabet. He redirects google.com into to the alphabet uh, page. Well, we can still serve a, uh, serve a search for Google with google.com because we'll know that Google is now an alternate name for alphabet. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about three things in specific. So the signals that we use to cluster pages. I'll talk a little bit about localization specifically because localization tends to get kind of caught in the grill a little bit here. And, uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about how we select representative URLs. Uh, so the signals that we use, um, there's a bunch of them. Uh, the three that are most prominent and that are uh, most at your disposal as well uh, are redirects, uh, the actual content of the page, and uh, real canonical tags that you send to us. There's a few others that we use, mostly variants on URL normalization, but um, those are a little different. <clears throat> so redirects are the most trustworthy signal that we get. Um, this is one of the reasons why when you guys redesign your sites, we always suggest please redirect the old pages to the news pages because then it makes it very trivial for us to identify, oh yes, this guy is now over here and they, we can continue to forward the signals as correct, uh, as appropriate. Um, <clears throat> now, in terms of content, it, to the surprise of no one, we take checksums of the content of your page. Um, we make a number of various efforts to ignore the boilerplate in them. Um, now, what you might be surprised by is that what sometimes get caught, gets caught in the grill here is um, what we call soft error pages, where um, someone has served us a 200, and then some kind of very fancy, elaborate looking crypto error that says, sorry, this page is not here. Um, we do have some machine learning models that try to catch these, but uh, webmasters are very, very creative and constantly surprise us with new ways of representing what is basically, this page is not here. Um, <clears throat> so this is one of the reasons why we prefer getting an H2P error, because then instead of uh, just dupe eliminating your page, we can do error handling, which is a little bit different. Um, one of the things that often gets caught here is site goes down for maintenance and puts up a, this page is down for maintenance, and suddenly half the site is gone because we crawled it while you were in maintenance mode. So please service a 500 instead of a 200. Uh, now finally, the uh, rel canonical annotations that you guys use, they get fed directly into clustering. Um, we have a fair amount of validation in front of these guys because um, sometimes people make mistakes. Uh, my favorite one was when we opened up one rel canonical to discover something to the effect of open squiggly brace, open squiggly brace, rel canonical target, close squiggly brace, squ close squiggly brace across the entire site. Um, but this happens in ways that are not so obvious, like your entire site is rel canonical to four slash, so please check your scripts. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> now, on localization, 
most of the time, when you think localization, you say, okay, here's the French version of my page, here's the German version of my page, and they have nothing to do with web deduplication because the content is completely dissimilar. Now, when deduplication does get involved is when, for example, you have same language, different country, or someone decides to get clever with a bunch of geo-redirecting, and to us, it all looks like the same page. So everything gets jammed into one cluster. Same for, um, you know, we, we see a lot of cases where people localize only the boilerplate, and then we throw out the boilerplate, and then it looks like the same page to us. Um, in these situations, we're basically um, hoping that you guys will tell us what to do with your hreflangs, because um, to us, it looks like you guys have sent us the same page. Okay, so uh, picking representative URLs. Um, obviously, if we jam a whole bunch of your pages into one cluster, then we have to figure out which one actually goes into the index. Um, we have a, a machine learned trained system that has every signal compete, or every page, pair of pages compete on uh, a set of signals that we've chosen. Um, the main thing that we try to do here is avoid hijacking. That's like rule number one, everything else falls behind that. Um, and in that case, it's actually very useful. We get escalations via uh, WTA through the forums, and, and these are a source, a great source of reports for us. Um, once we get past hijacking, our second concern here is basically the user experience. So, you know, is this really a good page to send the user to? Um, so, you know, something like a slow meta refresh is a bad experience. Um, security, if the page has an expired certificate, it's a bad experience. Uh, one thing that people fall into here is that we actually care a quite a bit about your uh, dependencies for secure pages. So if your secure page has insecure dependencies, we're not sure that it's going to work properly. It might just have a broken script, might not render. So um, check your dependencies. <laughs> um, and then finally, uh, once we get past all that, then all the stuff that you guys have really direct control over. So you can just tell us your real canonical target is the URL that you think we should make canonical of this cluster. Great. Um, or you can use redirects, uh, particularly 301s in this case. They are a signal. Uh, and sitemaps we use to some extent because, uh, well, it's, these are pages you prefer this to crawl, so there's probably good reason for us to use them. OK, so finally, to, to recap, um, some suggestions from what I just said. Um, use, your, use redirects to clue us into how you redesign your site. Um, send us meaningful HTTP results. Uh, check your rel canonical links. Sometimes there's broken scripts, that kind of fun stuff. Uh, use hreflang to help us localize. Um, please keep reporting those hijacking cases to the forums. Um, secure dependencies on your secure pages. And finally, uh, try to keep your canonical signals unambiguous. Uh, sometimes we see webmasters will say, here's a 301 with a rel canonical pointed the other way. And then we're like, well, I don't know what to do. Look, webmasters told me both cases are good. Um, so if you can keep them unambiguous, then you'll get what you want. If you if they aren't if they are ambiguous, you the system's probably going to just go off and find something else. All right, and that's it for me. Thank you. Uh -huh.